don't have any faith on the Yankees really climbing back into the top of the ranks in the AL. I'm not sure too many people do, especially with Aaron Judge still injured and Stanton still not playing very well. Um, I so I, essentially, would you? Is it fair to say it, the race is kind of between the Rays, Astros, and Rangers right now in terms of who comes out of the AL? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, those are the top three teams in the league. They're, they're far and away the best. I have. Let, I want to talk about the Yankees for a second, actually. Um, the Yankees, you could make this number double. You, you can make it 15 to 1. You can make it 20 to 1. I would want nothing to do with the Yankees at all. I might be placing bets, and I'm probably going to check it on the break, on them to miss the playoffs. I have zero faith in this team. Aaron Judge, it came out today, he's not going to have surgery on that toe. Okay, yippee. He's been out for over a month now with that toe injury that he got from crashing into the wall at Dodger Stadium, and he got two injections in that toe, and now it's saying, okay, he's not going to have surgery, but he's going to be out through the All-Star break at least, and when he comes back, what's that going to look like? He's an outfielder. Yeah. All of his value comes from being a, a batter, and he's going to be running around on that toe What's that look like for Aaron Judge? How do we know, if at all, that he's going to be even kind of close to the same guy? The rest of that lineup, do you have any faith that they can carry water? They haven't so far. Stanton stinks. Donaldson's washed. Volpe has been better lately, but he's a rookie. He's going to go through these hot and cold patches. Everybody else on that team is just average. Glaber Torres has fallen off a cliff. Their best hitter Rizzo is playing in Baltimore not now. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Hicks left New York and then started hitting and then started playing like he was worthy of a roster spot. The Yankees cut him and then he went to a division rival and now he's playing awesome. I have no faith in the Yankees and the rotation. Okay, great. I don't like Garrett Cole. He's a good pitcher. Fine. What's the rest of that? I mean, Carlos Rodon comes back soon. He's missed all of the season. He'll be making his first start off a major shoulder injury, who's to say he doesn't get hurt? And even if he doesn't get hurt again, what's that look like? Coming back from a shoulder injury where he's already had shoulder issues in the past? And then the rest of that rotation is, okay, Luis Severino is, ugh, he's had like an eight ERA over the last two months. And then Domingo Roman, okay, great, you had a perfect game against the A's. It's the A's, and you've never been good before in your career. So why are we supposed to think that you're going to be awesome all of a sudden? I think the Yankees stink. I want nothing to do with them. The Blue Jays are just men. The Baltimore Orioles continue to not be priced very seriously, even though they probably are the, you know, and it hurts that they're behind the Rays and the Astros and the Rangers. Those three are the clear, far and away, clear cut top teams in the AL. The Orioles have been really good. Their pitching is, guys, when you look at their rotation, you see Tyler Wells and Kyle Bradish and Cole Irvin and Kyle Gibson. They're guys who you look at, you're like, who? Like, I, I don't know any of these guys. Or if you do, you're like, you only know them because you were fading them last year. Wells and Bradish especially have been really, really good so far. And the Orioles, I think, are in a position where they can add. They can trade a prospect or two to get somebody really, really good. Depends who it is because there aren't a lot of really big fishes out on the trade market. But if they swing a big deal, they have the offense and the stars as far as Adley Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson and a couple other guys who could carry you offensively. It's just the rotation. I think the Orioles, if you could find a big price on them, might be worth a look as maybe an AL winner. They probably won't win the AL East at this point just because the Rays have built such a big lead there. But the Orioles are really talented, and I don't think that they should be priced at huge prices. So it's just something to think about. Where does Chet Holmgren finish in Rookie of the Year voting next season? He just had 15, 9, and 4 blocks in his summer league debut. Holmgren drafted to the Oklahoma City Thunder two years ago, but was injured last year, so didn't play. So he's in the running. This will be his rookie campaign coming up. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the market has to be one and a half, right? Like he's probably finishing first or second, depending on how you feel about Scoot Henderson, as maybe he'll be better than Chet. But I feel like the market would be one and a half, right? Like I, I feel like that's what would happen. Um, I'm going to say he finishes second just because now – and we've seen this before of how much that if the experience happens of like, it's not like Chuck Holmgren was just sitting at home. You know, he wasn't just hanging yeah. around. Like he was at the facility practicing, going on team flights, like learned. And Sean Morash brought this up last week, like learned how to be a pro really, which is one thing less for him to do. Whereas like Scoot Henderson and Victor Wembanyama and the rest of these guys have to do, they have to learn how to 
take these flights and check in the, checking not that checking into a hotel is a really hard thing to do but you know they have to like learn right. how to be a pro and go through the rounds and chet's already kind of got that all through now he just has to go out there and play basketball so i feel like two is probably the right answer here yeah i would say that i would say that or i don't know i mean well victor Wembanyama's odds have gone down i mean he was like minus 250 or some minus 300 to win rookie of the year when he was first drafted and i mean for good reason but are the spurs going to like injury is is a concern in any of these markets and if anything happens to him even the tiniest of things the spurs are an organization that are going to just slow play everything going forward so they might hold him out for more games than he necessarily needs to be to be on the more cautious side so I I think it's kind of a race. I don't want to say just between Scoot and um, Chet, but yeah, I would say probably around two for for Chet as well. I think he would have an upper hand on yeah. Scoot, and especially because the Thunder should be competitive this year. And who knows what the Blazers are going to look like if they get rid of Damian Lillard? And not that I mean, a lot of times the top players in the draft are always going to the bottom feeder team. So it's not the success of the team doesn't really weigh into effect that much in the rookie of the year voting, but maybe more um, primetime games, maybe more nationally televised games where Chet gets a little bit more love and attention. So yeah, I think, I think it, where he's at right now in the market is probably fairly priced plus 550 at M- bet MGM. I could see him being maybe more around 350 or so closer to scoop. What's your beef with Blake Snell? It's not really beef. It's just, <laughs> this was like two years ago. I figured out that Blake Snell is a very volatile pitcher and he does, and he gets priced like he's an ace. He was getting priced like he was still, you know, the World Series almost hero for the Rays. And then they traded him to San Diego and it just didn't keep up. It, it just, he was not able to keep up those performances that he had when he was winning Cy Young Awards in Tampa Bay. But he was being priced like he was a minus 200 favorite almost every time. And there were just ways to beat him, whether that be opposing team total or, you know, opposing team's money line or anything. And so I started fading Blake Snell and I made it my whole thing. Like I just made it, I, I made it my whole thing. Like this is what I built my rock on. It was fading Blake Snell. And it started years ago and people started to catch on. Oh, Blake Snell. But there was always this year and Joe Ostrowski would always give me crap for it that, well, he had these stretches for about a month where he would be dominant. He would be awesome. But I was always of the thought that he would always revert back. Like Blake Snell would always turn back into a pumpkin. And this famously got me a handlebar mustache about a month ago because he's pitching really <laughs> well. well. And I was Blake like, all right, you know, Snow. he's going to. Yes. And I was like, well, he's going to gotcha. turn back into a pumpkin eventually. He can't keep it up. And he's kept it up. And he, and that was about a month ago, Kate. And now here we are. He's still pitching really well. He's still going five, six innings, getting double digit Ks. And he's pitching really well for the Padres, even though that team as a whole stinks. But Ugh, I don't yeah. know. He might just win this stupid award. This market is so dumb. I don't know what's happening. It's just so, so stupid. Nobody refuses to separate from the pack, which maybe it creates a betting opportunity. Maybe you really like Blake Snell and you find value at 18 to one. Great. More power to you. I refuse to put more money into this market. I'm just here. Throw up your hands and we'll see what happens. I don't know anymore. I forgot that Blake Snell was the mustache man. That's where mm-hmm. it all comes in. Which, by the way, you grew back your the rest of your facial hair, your beard, very quickly. <laughs> like, you only had the handlebars yeah. for a couple of days. Yeah, it started to grow in very fast. This has always been my thing. I, I you know, as a Arabic Colombian man, like, you it's just the hand or doubt. Like the facial hair yeah. grows back very, very quickly, which was why I was inclined to do take the bet in the first place. You know, worst thing that happens, all right, I have handlebars and it lasts a couple of days. And then, you know, the scruff starts to come in. It's been less than a month. It's been about three, four weeks. And we're already back to almost, you know, the chin's still got to fill in a little bit here, but not worried about it. So that's why I'm more inclined to do stupid things like that because it's only going to last a couple of weeks. I get laughed at on the network for a little bit, but you know, then you go out and it's a conversation starter and your friends make fun of you too. And it's a good memory. So, Hey, here we are. 